G'day ladies and gents, or should I say bonjour, because today we are going to be flying the Mirage 2000. Now the last video I uploaded about the Mirage 2000C was about standing up to the F-14 bullies. The F-14s were, and still are in some way, the dominant force at top tier. They often tend to command the skies quite well, and with their AIM-54 Phoenixes combined with their excellent radar, the AIM-7s, and their decent flight performance, you tend to have a fairly perfect storm. Now, there is only one really proper counter for this, and that is the Mirage 2000. The Mirage excels in being able to just do things well. And I say that and sounds very broad and wishy-washy, but at the end of the day, the Mirage has a fairly good suite of weapons. It's sort of like a very sneaky, smaller brother to the F-14. Uh, despite being from across the continent, the Mirage 2000 has a little trick up its sleeve. It has actually received a buff. And that buff is a buff to its airframe's ability to maintain speed, or at least to, to work at speed. Before, the Mirage used to break at 1360 kilometers per hour. Now you can push it past 1400, and this gives it a very good advantage. This means that you don't have to try and go and convert that energy into altitude in order to not waste it. In fact, what you can do is you can just power on through and play at high speeds. The Mirage 2000 is one of the few planes that has the AOA to avoid an AIM-7F in a head-on situation at, say, moderate speeds. It's got a really, really powerful ability in that negates the main sort of defiant factor of the F-14. Of course, apart from the AIM-54s, which can be a bit of a non-threat sometimes, depending on the way that you approach them. Now. The Mirage has only four missiles. It's got two aim, uh, sorry, two Matra Magic 2s, which are improved and all aspect versions of the original Matra Magics. They are sort of, I would say, roughly analogous to the AIM 9L. They're not equivalent, they're analogous. So they are roughly sort of comparable. The Matra Super 530Ds, I think, are the semi active radar homing missiles, and these are attached to a fairly decent radar. I would sort of lump this at the same sort of level as the uh, F4J's radar. It's pretty decent overall. It does tend to lose some locks every now and then. Um, and the missiles that it comes with are fairly decent. You can get kills all the way out through till about eight kilometers uh, very comfortably. Now I say that with uh, a missile that's of a fairly long range, but at the end of the day in War Thunder, you really do wanna be making sure that you get kills with your missiles because every missile is precious. Now, we have one coming in, so I'm just gonna barely, barely miss that. Send an uh, Matra Magic 2 out on the way, and then I'm gonna look for the source of that missile. So, of course, with the source comes an F-14, and uh, whilst we're looking at raining down freedom, we also want to sort of send them a little baguette. Just a little little French baguette right their way. And of course, the F-14 is not concentrating on me, so I managed to sneak in and get the kill. I'm going to look for a couple of other targets that might be behind him, and then I'm going to circle back to the main dogfight. I have half my missiles gone, but I also have two kills, and I've taken out one very important target, the F-14, and a second slightly important target in the MiG-23. Now, I do have to be careful here, because this F-14 can very, very easily aim 7 me so i'm just going to start to bear away and the f-14 has decided to go defensive instead of offensive he's probably caught me late and the uh, super 530ds are very very strong missiles especially when they are in that close range and in a head-on situation it seems like that this radar is uh, tuned for that head-on so you see the po uh, search pulse doppler head-on which means that notching affects it a little bit more at least that's my understanding so try and use these missiles in a head-on. At least now it's signposted so that it's uh, a little bit more obvious and it's a little bit more able to be worked with so that you're not trying to get some target that is like several kilometers away that is actively notching you. This makes it a lot easier to swoop in and get yourself some kills. Uh, this is a really, really good thing for the uh, Mirage, especially considering that it also got itself a nice little buff in the form of that top speed. Now I'm going to send a missile, but unfortunately the F-14 gets taken out early, and this MiG-21 is going to be my juicy target here. I'm going to sort of come in and try and get a guns kill, and he's very, very slow. I'm wondering if he was actually damaged. Uh, I can't quite tell, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to jet away, send my next message with a uh, little missile here. Unfortunately, I've got none, so I'm going to have to go with the guns. 
it looks like the F-14 is going to be a nice easy target, provided that he does not go for the last second head-on. Instead, he decides to duck away and then pitch up at the last second. I am going to try and follow that around, uh, but it looks like the MiG-29 is firm on his bum, and hopefully that means that the uh, F-14 is either way too concentrated on getting uh, surviving or something like that, but unfortunately he doesn't. The F-16 is going to have to be the next target here. I'm going to follow in, go for a shot, nothing lands, and I just have to give chase. It looks like the F-16 is going to end up in a long chase. And what I'm going to do here, I'm pretty confident that I can actually keep up with him, provided that uh, I don't really do any crazy maneuvers and that he stays at low altitude. I think the F-16 has much better uh, sort of energy retention and acceleration. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Someone let me know in the comments. But unfortunately, all of that is all to waste because he doinks it into the grass. So I'm going to consider that a maneuver kill with a little Ace Reno. The Mirage is extremely potent. It's proven itself to be very, very capable. The uh, leading edge slats, the delta wing, the absolutely monstrous thrust it gets leaves it with some of the things that the original Mirage uh, was sorely lacking, and that is energy retention in turns. Of course, this comes at a price, where meaning that you, you can't just turn and bleed all your speed and cut into your opponents, but I prefer it this way because speed is a lot more important at top tier than you might think. You might be able to cut into a single turn, but of course, one that leaves you to energy bleed out where you can be energy trapped, meaning that you can't get away and your opponent just continues to boom and zoom you until you eventually fall into the ground. The other option is that someone else comes in and sweeps you while you're slow, and neither of these are preferable solutions. So staying fast is really, really good. Now, I want to show you this particular match because this is actually a full down tier. These are F5Cs, and I really don't think that this is fair because the Mirage is just too damn powerful. There's one that's 4 kilometers out, but the one that's about 5 kilometers out, I'm going to send a Super 530D to. 3 kilometers is a really, really good engagement range, and of course, if they are that close and not flying very low to the ground, you are very, very easy at uh, sort of killing them. But notice there the speed that I was traveling at. 1,470 odd kilometers an hour is quite significant and is quite a significant upgrade over last patch where it didn't really have the ability to travel at such speeds. This gives the uh, Mirage 2000 unprecedented capabilities now that this plane has the extra speed. That speed really makes such a difference and honestly I say it so many times speed is your lifeblood in jets so having more of it is always a good thing regardless of whether you can do anything with it or not. So having that ability to just have more is obviously preferable. Now, I'm going to send a Matra Magic 2 off to this MiG-23. He's sort of within three and a half kilometers, but the Magic 2s actually don't really have that much range compared to things like the AIM-9Ls and even the AIM-9Gs. I find that the Matra Magics tend to fizzle out fairly quickly, and as you can see there, one of them only landed on the F5C. I'm going to send a Super 530, and it does some funny stuff it tends to do that at certain ranges and certain target locations and when you are a little bit fiddly but we have bigger problems here to fry it looks like the f-14 is sending a missile but we managed to dodge that fairly fairly easily the match is looking pretty bad and i've only managed to score two kills with four missiles this is not an ideal situation and of course we are trying our best to try and even out the situation it looks like the f-5c there has been absolutely turfed by the mig-21 MF or the MiG-23 MF rather uh, and we're just sort of now looking for targets to dogfight. We want to get into those low and slow dogfights but of course with an A-10 around slinging 9Ls it's not ideal and with an F-5C coming hot on our tail I don't really want to bleed all of the energy sort of just to be made the victim of an A-10. So I have to be really careful of both of these targets and whilst I'm not paying attention to the A-10 I'm fairly confident that he's got his uh, plate full there with a couple of other things like Ground targets, very, very, very useful of uh, sort of use of resources there. Now the F5 manages to horny in on me and gets taken out by the MiG-21 uh, the, the MiG MF. And we end up with a fairly decent situation here. So I just decide that the best thing to do is turn back to base, rearm, get some new missiles, get some fresh fuel and go at it again. Hopefully I can pick off that F14. Hopefully I can pick off the A10s and the F5s that are left. But honestly, this battle rating just feels a little bit unfair. Sitting at 11.3 is not really an ideal situation for this plane. It's a very capable plane, and I think it can tussle with things like the F-16 and the MiG-29, and of course it can tussle with things like the F-14, like we found out in the previous video on the Mirage 2000. 
This is a plane that does not really belong facing things that are subsonic. The A7D is really no match, despite it, you know, being a ground attacker and being sort of uh, not meant to, in theory, tussle with the fighters. I still feel like it's a little bit of uh, slaughterhouse trying to do that sort of stuff. Now, this MiG-23 ML learns the hard way of what a Matra Super 530D can do, but honestly, I think the MiG-23 is sort of the extent of what should be facing this thing. Perhaps an F-104S or an F-104G, maybe... But these things are sort of very, very borderline. The Mirage is super capable. It's very, very fast. It's very maneuverable. And of course, it has really, really strong missiles. So you can't sort of just throw it a low battle rating and expect it not to seal club, which is exactly what it's doing. I also find it a little bit heinous that it's fighting F5s because the F5s don't really stand a chance. They can be quite easily energy trapped. Now, I'm going to send a Matra Magic and it looks like it just sort of phases through. Not quite ready for the magic of the F5D, uh, the F5C, but is the A7 ready for a Matra magic up the bum? I hope so, because it's going to be very, very close, and unfortunately, he does have his brain switched on. He's got his brain cells working, and that leaves me with another set of uh, very, very disappointing non-missile kills. I have to go in again for guns. This particular match has proven to be a little bit frustrating for me because I've been very reckless with my uh, ammunition, particularly my missiles, and it's just proven to be very, very rough. But have a look at how easily I'm able to get onto the 6 of the A7, being a subsonic, not having much energy, and uh, basically being energy trapped by me. So we're going to now target the F5. We're going to send the Matra Super 530. It's a little ambitious, but hopefully it tracks. And it looks like it's going to do some funny stuff. It hits, which is extremely disappointing once again. This leaves me with about one kill for three missile, or for four missiles. Hopefully the F5 is going to shed enough energy in the turns to make it an easy gun kill. Because uh, I have to admit, this is a very, very disappointing uh, round for me. Not necessarily because the plane's bad, but more so because I've been very impatient. And that's one of the things that you really can't do with this plane. Now I'm going to spray, pray, give myself the ace. But I feel like it wasn't a particularly impressive ace. Now, don't get me wrong, if any individual player gets five kills, it's very good, but I sort of put a bit of a higher level of pressure on myself. I tend to set myself a much higher standard than is really necessary, and so this particular match I find to be a little bit sort of subpar, but I kind of wanted to show you the damage that I can really do at a battle rating where the enemies are just not up to par. The F5C is really no match for the Mirage 2000, and I think that it's better off fighting F-14s, F-16s, and MiG-23 MLs. I think it's much better suited to that with a very similar level of performance. Now, we're moving on to the next match here. I'm going to sort of select this F-4J. He's coming in close. That 4km range is good for a missile launch. He's coming in super close, and it looks like he's going to send one my way, but unfortunately, he is way too late. And of course, we're getting lots and lots of missiles coming through right here. Again, this is one of the earlier matches that I played with this plane, so I'm still sort of getting back into the swing of it. At least that's what I can say to make myself feel better for my failures. The F-14 here is looking kind of juicy. I'm going to give the uh, missile there a miss as such, and I'm going to go vertical. It'll allow me to take a better surveillance of the battlefield and have a look at things that I can fight with a little bit more impunity. It looks like the F-14 is spamming flares very gently, but the Matra Magic 2s are very, very good at avoiding that, but I've been a little bit too ambitious there with that missile, and it just didn't manage to make its mark. So I'm going to go up again. I'm going to cut my afterburner and give myself a little bit of turn and burn capabilities, but there comes an F-14. He's coming in very, very hot, and I'm just going to go and try and use my guns, see if I can get a hit. Unfortunately, nothing lands, and I'm starting to get surrounded by F-14s. It's starting to get pretty desperate and I'm just going to try and use my guns on this one manage to get him and see what else is coming around there's a MiG-23 that is closing the distance or at least was at least uh, the F-14 is going to come in very very hot from the front so I'm going to send a missile this way hopefully I am going to get at least one more kill before the situation gets too dire and it looks like the enemies are really on my bum and that's the problem with a semi-active radar homing missile I just can't see what's coming out behind me and despite all the effort that I put in I still managed to walk away with four kills but I don't really win the match now that's okay because the Mirage is not meant to be a one versus X fighter you don't have command over the battlefield you're meant to be a 1v1 plane it's a Mirage platform. It's a Delta Wing. It's meant to take on those planes one versus one and sort of dissect them very, very slowly. Now, we're going to go into another match here, which sort of uh, demonstrates, again, that sort of low battle rating. We're in a match that is a full down tier once again. The F5s are really no competition here. I feel like these guys 
despite being premium players, you know, players that may not have the highest amount of experience in the game, I really don't think they should be fighting something like this, despite it being, you know, not too far away. But seriously, this thing is really, really powerful. It's good enough to stand up to the F-14s, which means that it's too good to fight things like the F-5C. Again, we're going to go around here. The MiG-23s, however, are much more suitable prey, and I'm going to send the March of Magic off to the MiG-23 here. It looks like it's going to strike beautifully, and this MiG-21 is also going to learn the wrath of a uh, nice little all-aspect March of Magic 2. Beautiful, beautiful kill again, leaving me with kill number three. We've got another missile coming in, and this is an F-4J. The F-4J is probably some of the things that I don't really feel too guilty about uh, chasing after. The F4J is absolutely, by all means, inferior to the Mirage 2000, but I think that the F4J has its own role as a support fighter. It's got its, you know, little niche, and I have made a video on it. I'm quite proud of it, actually. I did very, very well, and I had a real blast playing this plane. So if you guys are interested in that, have a look in the uh, in the pins. I suppose there's there'll, there'll be something. There'll be something. It'll either be in the description or it'll be in the cards on the top. But meanwhile... We're just mopping up F5Cs like it's nothing, and the F8U2 is also looking super juicy. So, we're going to give chase, but it looks like he is, uh, I don't really know. He's just maybe desperately trying to get away. He's put himself into a vertical, and he's just actually managed to get away. So, hopefully he doesn't continue the vertical, because that would be really, really bad for me. I'm going to sort of cut out of it, try my luck with another plane, and hopefully sort of jet away fast enough for the F8U to no longer be a threat. And whilst that is the case, the Mirage 5F kind of saves my bacon there. That could have very easily been a death, or that could have easily been me in a lot of strife. The F8U is very capable, but again, not capable enough to fight the Mirage. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.